Hey guys, it's uh, a wall back on the PCT. It is Tuesday the 17th, just uh, almost 2 p.m. <clears throat> just getting on right now. After um, yesterday afternoon, about four, I think, I, I was able to make it to Stevens Pass and went down to uh, Leavenworth to uh, Wendy's and Dan's house, one of the sponsors of Warriors Expedition, and um, took the night off, ate, slept. And relaxed. Uh, did my uh, grocery shop this morning, and then uh, Wendy just dropped me back off on the pass. So back up here. <clears throat> but um, I uh, some interesting thing happened yesterday. I thought I heard someone come up behind me here, but no. Uh, <clears throat> I've been. <laughs> I'm convinced the last like uh, ever since I walked into Washington, I've been pushing it pretty hard. Um, a couple of reasons why it's it's just kind of, I'm actually kind of excited about getting close to finishing. I'm I think I'm actually kind of ready to finish this thing off. So I've been pushing a little hard. Well, I get to their house. Oh, you know, by the way, it's considerably cooler right now too. Um, <clears throat> I get to their house last night, yesterday afternoon. Sat and kind of had a drink with Dan and kind of relaxed. And they were super good people. And uh, <clears throat> I mean, I, I get up. I, I think I went up, I went away myself in the laundry room. You know, I took a shower, started my laundry. We hadn't ate yet. They had some friends over, so we hadn't eaten. And I hadn't eaten any food in probably since, like, lunchtime, like 11 o'clock. And that was honestly nothing. It was like a tortilla and a piece of Spam or something. Something really light. But I had uh, <clears throat> got up to, to check my laundry and, and to jump on the scale. I'm down to 201, which is crazy. Yeah, starting out at 235. And I got a little lightheaded and I didn't think anything about it. And I know it's because I hadn't eaten anything in a while. And I, I don't think it was dehydrated at all. I've been I've been drinking pretty good. But <clears throat> so about five minutes later, Dan kinda warmed up some spaghetti for me, really good spaghetti and some uh, salad. And I got up and I almost fell over. It was really weird. I was super lightheaded. Luckily Dan and his friend kinda caught me, because that wouldn't have been good. My big old head would have hit something on the ground. <clears throat> so, this next uh, stretch here from here to Stahican, which is still over, I think it was 107. I'm going to do 20 a day. Today I'm only going to do 10 because it's late anyway. I'm just going to get to a good campsite and call it a night. Um, I think it's supposed to, I think this the chance of rain is going to be a little bit better tomorrow because it is kind of a little misty right now. So, uh, <clears throat> and as soon as I ate food, I was fine. And that's exactly what I needed. It wasn't uh I think I only had like maybe one drink, so it wasn't really the booze that did it. But I think I just kind of wore myself kind of down and wasn't replacing the food a lot. You know, so I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I had this speech about me carrying a bunch of food in my backpack. Well, I still got to eat it. So <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It's almost like it doesn't matter how much I eat here. I'm still wearing myself down. And after 20, 100, 2465 miles, it kind of adds on your body a little bit. So. <clears throat> I'm going to take it easy. The good thing about coming into Stahican, I think I'll get there probably Saturday or Sunday. Post office closed, so I'll have to spend at least a day or a day and a half there. So maybe Nero and a zero. So that would be good to kind of rest the body a little bit for the final push up to uh, the, half, so the final 80 miles up to the border. But yes, uh, 188 miles to go from Stevens Pass. I'm excited about getting there. I'm excited about finishing this journey. This has been a great journey. It's been inspiring enlightening uh tons of self-reflection uh <clears throat> tons of chances to kind of work everything out that i wanted to work out and to kind of know where i want to go from here so uh <coughs> hit my head last night and fall over but well, that was a little rough um and another thing that's kind of going on is i got this crazy uh, uh chafing on my lower back around my tailbone from my backpack and because my backpack presses on the <coughs> lower of my back and I, I'm trying something different. I'm, I've got my, I don't know if you can see or not, I've got my shorts inside out and I'm pretty convinced that just the seam on my shorts that goes around <coughs> underneath the waistline, I think it's just the seam. I mean, these are running shorts because they're pretty soft, but I'm pretty sure the seam is just because it just, it just constantly rubs all day long. And after 20 plus miles every day, 
it just wear it just rubs you raw, which is, it just it sucks. I mean, it hurts. So I think <clears throat> I'm trying to switch these shorts around. If that doesn't work, I need to do something different because yeah, I can't have that happen anymore. Cause that's uh, pretty painful every day. It's usually not painful today. It doesn't bother me, but then when I go to lay down or I take a shower, then I can really feel it. So hopefully, just turning my shorts inside out will will fix. And it's amazing the things you find out after walking close to 2,500 miles. What happens to your body? <clears throat> but I re-sewed my shoe up a little bit. You can see there with a tear, <clears throat> and I put a little bit of super glue on the outside of it. So I hope that holds it together to the finish and <laughs> until I can walk out because uh, well, these shoes got to last me the rest of the trip. So <clears throat> it's amazing, uh, like two Neros, get in there for and call a night and crash and then get up the next day, cook a great breakfast. I mean, Dan and uh, Winnie had some really good sausage in there. I cooked myself some sausage and eggs. Beautiful home, just a really, really nice home. And really, really good people and good Americans. So it was great spending time with you guys. Thanks for everything, I appreciate it. And uh, now it's time to get back on to finish this thing. Kind of weird. I thought this would be uphill, but it's actually home. It's kind of like downhill. But uh, good to get out here, get walking, get a few miles in today, call it a day, maybe get some good sleep out here, and uh, keep on moving forward. Thanks again, guys, for following me. Uh, always appreciate your support and uh, your comments on the videos and everything you guys are doing to kind of help me out here. It's down to the last wire. I can almost see the... Uh, Almost see the finish line, but I'm not there yet. I still got some walking to do before I get there. My body's still got to hold up and make it make it to the terminus point, though. So, it's kind of nice. I finalized <coughs> my exit plans. So, again, my uh, uh, newly acquired friend, uh, Cammy from Vancouver, she's going to, she offered to provide some trail magic to myself and whoever hikers are with me to kind of bring us back to where we need to go. <coughs> I'm probably going to do, <coughs> we're probably going to drop myself off and hitch up to Thor. He's either right behind me or, or right in front of me. We'll probably finish the same time. This will bring us back to Seattle. Uh, <clears throat> probably spend the night and then I'll fly, probably fly back to uh, Central Oregon the following day. I'm thinking <clears throat> at this rate and uh, with my possible short layover in Stahikin waiting for the post office to open up, I should, should be able to touch the monument 25th or 26th barring any new fires. Everything else is kind of in check right now. Everything's still open. Just hope that the weather doesn't bring any craziness. <clears throat> More thunder showers. They have had some thunder showers today. So hopefully that doesn't start anything new. I'll just keep our fingers crossed. That I can just kind of move forward and, and touch the border when I get there. So we'll see. Well, thanks guys again. Hope you're enjoying the videos, the information I'm putting out. Uh, that last section was beautiful. It was incredible. But I heard the next section is even better, so looking forward to see some more of Washington. All right, guys, thanks. We get some hiking done. That is Lake Fahala, just north of Stevens Pass. In my campsite, here's what I woke up to this morning. Kind of hard to see it, oh, the fox coming back in again. There's a couple lakes down there. I don't know if you can see them or not, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll see if I can show you. Let me back up a little bit, show you my campsite. Found this spot off the trail. Just kind of right on this cliff. That's beautiful. Ooh, and the fox still hanging around. Good morning guys, Wednesday, August 18th. I don't know if you can see me, you can probably see me now. 
just got to the top of this hill. I forgot the name of this hill right here. Um, actually did. There's an incredible view. Okay, that's, I'm pretty sure that's Baker in front of me. And Glacier Peak is over here somewhere. I saw it on the way coming up, but I'll see. I'll walk and talk for a bit here as I'm going down the hill. Uh, did only 12.5 yesterday coming out, 12, point, 12 and a half miles coming out of Stevens Pass. I just kind of wanted to get to a good, had a late start, didn't start till two. I wanted to just get a nice campsite and I, I thought I was going towards one, but I found one, well I showed you the videos of it, I found one that was so much better. I'm glad I went a little farther and found that one. That was a really nice site. A little wet this morning, um, but I think today is supposed to be a good day. And there are some incredible vistas out today. Uh, if you can see those on the video or not. And uh, man, this this is a beautiful area. I told I just they told me the more the farther north I get, the better it's going to get. So, but uh, plan for today. Okay, so the plan for the rest of the week. Kind of ran my numbers last night. I'm waiting for a Glacier Peak to open up over here, but. Pretty sure it's Glacier Peak because it's one big freaking glacier. Um, <clears throat> plan is for the next week. I kind of ran the numbers. Um, since Stehekin, I have a box coming to Stehekin, and the post office closes at 2 on Saturday, I can make it there, but I'd be pushing like crazy and I'd probably break myself in half trying to get there. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do in between 20 and 25 for the next four days get to the shuttle at Steakin High Bridge get the High Bridge um, early Sunday morning take the first shuttle I mean it actually doesn't really matter uh, whenever the shuttle earlier better get there just kind of hang out Steakin all day Sunday um, relax and then grab my box uh, first thing Monday morning take the next shuttle back to High Bridge and start hiking north so that'd be on Monday morning Wednesday, the plan is, okay, so next Wednesday, so a week from today, uh, to be at the Slack Pack Point, mile, tw I think 2638, I added up the numbers right. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll camp there for the night, leave a lot of my heavy gear, obviously bring my food with me, <clears throat> everything I need to get to the border, which is only 15 miles, tag the border early on Thursday, so I'll do a loop and then come back 15 to my Slack Pack site, spend the night. So Thursday, so Thursday, a week from tomorrow, I should be touching the monument. And that's given everything works out okay, no crazy, crazy weather. I think maybe there might be a little bit of rain come up this weekend, but everything should be okay. Knock on wood. <clears throat> and then uh, the Trail Angel Cami offered to pick us up. So I think we're going to be back at Hearts Pass. Uh, myself, Thor, I'm going to catch up to Wingate a little bit, see if he needs a ride. She's got room for a couple more, so we'll see who's with me at the time. And uh, jump in her car, head down the hill, Friday, the 27th, I believe it is. I'm heading to Seattle, spend one night in Seattle at a really nice hotel, get a big steak dinner, celebrate the victory. Oh man, these mountains are incredible. And um, call it a day. So that's the kind of tenant plan for the next week. Um, when you get down to this, you kind of have to line up your your miles and your timing and everything too to get your resupply. You got to line up, obviously, you got to line up with your your exit plan to get out of here. So I think that'll work. Oh, another beautiful lake. Man, this place is this place is something else. So I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. <clears throat> My most important thing now is just to stay healthy. Um, the last week or so I've had a bunch of little stupid little accidents and I, I don't think I'm just getting complacent but could be probably just relaxed a little too much I was getting water yesterday my left leg slipped in between these two rocks I'm thinking oh that's great and then about four or five days ago I fell on my face when I was trying to get into my near my tent site over this log that I misjudged so and then two nights ago I was falling out at uh, Wendy's and Dan's house. Yeah, so I need to, I gotta watch my ass. So I gotta make sure I can still do this thing. I know everyone's, it's, it's going southbound, all section hackers are like, oh, you got this, you're done, congratulations. I'm like, no, 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 not yet. Don't congratulate me yet. 
I'm not there yet. So that's the plan for the next week. I'm not sure if I'll get this this section of videos out from Stevens to uh, Stevens fastest to Hecan before. Heard it's uh, doesn't sound like there's any cell coverage at Tahikin, but there are, there is Wi-Fi. So <clears throat> I'm gonna try to jump on the Wi-Fi, push out one more video. Then the final video, I'll put that together. I'll do uh, from Tahikin to the monument, and then all the way to Seattle. So I think I'll throw all those together for you. So, but if you see this video before I finish, then you'll kind of know my timeline of when things should be complete. So. Uh, the next few days, weather looks good. It's going to be pretty decent. I think the temperature is going to be nice. I mean, if it's just a clear blue sky today, hopefully this will stay. Keep my fingers crossed. No new fire start up. Um, that's like the best case scenario. So what we got to do now is just to kind of walk north. You know, actually slept in this morning. It was beautiful. I didn't actually start until like 7.30, which is really super late for me. But... I only got to do 20, between 20 and 25, so I can do that easily and finish by 4 p.m. at the latest. So it's kind of neat. You can see the tracks of the trail right there all the way across this whole meadow. If I get some good views of uh, Glacier Peak, I'll, I'll get them for you. Yeah, but right now, I'm going to get back to hiking. Thanks, guys. I can see a little bit of smoke up there. I'm not sure where that's coming from. I'm not sure how long that one's been going on, but there's one over there just to my east, I believe. Out. I think Glacier Peak's right front here. <clears throat> oh, I'll look the trees. Oh, no, here it is. <clears throat> Glacier Peak.
this is something else up here. Well, I mean, with the southbound folks, at least they get to see this after they go through the hell with the milk tree. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's something else. That's a lot of fog out there. Yeah. This is completely unreal. Hey guys, it is, um, sorry about the adjustment here, Thursday, August 19th, just uh, 9 in the morning. Been on the trail for about three hours, just climbed over a big pass. Uh, I'm coming into this crazy landscape, just incredible landscape that uh, I can't believe I'm hiking in. Just amazing. In a weird way, this looks a little like my time in Afghanistan. Uh, yes, I jumped down to uh, when I was in Leavenworth, I caught up with the news, what's going on. I just want to mention a few things. I didn't really want to mention anything, but I do want to mention a few things. Um, <clears throat> my heart truly goes out to the good people of Afghanistan that, that really want a better life for themselves and a better country for themselves. And unfortunately, they're probably never going to have one. All Americans, including myself, feel... And I feel that being born in America, I won like life's lottery. Very fortunate to be born here and raised here into an environment where I can thrive. I can go to school. I can educate myself. I can have children. Not in a forced marriage, but in a marriage of my choice. <laughs> and in divorce, but that's, that's another story. <clears throat> but that my all four of my children can go to school, including my daughters, can go to college. They can go to educate then they can they don't have to be shipped off to a forced marriage so i truly believe that i won life's lottery of being born here i'll also agree that yeah i, I think our personally this is me personally feeling our mission in afghanistan was over years ago and as soon as we killed Osama bin laden we should have been done should have been organized with draw but Politics gets in the way of a lot of things, and I'm sure that affected a big thing. So, but it should be an organized, an organized withdrawal, not a, and Katie earmuffs for the girls, not a clusterfuck that we just saw happening. I mean, that's a complete shit show. And so, <clears throat> but I am, my heart does go out to, and I worked with, you know, a lot of Afghans, all the, all the times I was over there. And I've worked with a, a lot of people that were really, really, really good people. I worked with some people that weren't as good. But for the really, really good people that were over there, that truly care about their country, um, I really hope things work out for you as best they can. And uh, my heart goes out to you. My prayers go out to you all. But that's enough Af on Afghanistan. Back to the hike. See, my... I spent time there. Both my sons deployed there. So I do have a little bit of personal stake in it. Success. I mean, you never want to go somewhere and see it all fall to shit. I think that the writing was on the wall in that one. I'm pretty sure everybody knew that's what was going to happen. I think just the way it happened was uh, sad. So that's it. Okay, I need to refocus on the hike. Which I'm going to, this morning I woke up, 153 miles to go. Uh, I'm already past the 2,500 mile mark, which is pretty awesome. Uh, <clears throat> worked out the strategy, my exit strategy. Thor and I went over the numbers. <clears throat> it looks pretty good for touching the uh, monument a week from today. So, all things go good. Might get a little weather on Friday, Saturday. But today being Thursday, I'm going to... Not push too crazy, but I'm going to get to Stahican probably early on Sunday. I'm going to try to get a room at the Stahican, I think it's the Stahican Valley Resort, SVR. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get a room there. If I can, if not, I'll camp at the campground and chill out. But I guess SVR is pretty cool because it includes all their meals, includes your Wi-Fi, includes laundry, includes showers, everything, everything's included. If you go to the campground, you got to pay for everything separately. Uh, obviously it's cheaper, but 
whenever I've had the chance to get a uh, real bed, I've tried pretty hard to get one. <clears throat> so, get there on Sunday morning, hang out until Monday morning when the post office opens up, grab my box. Uh, I had a seven day supply, but I'm only gonna need a, like a four and a half day supply. So I'm gonna dump some good stuff into the hiker box. So the guys behind me will have some good stuff waiting for them. And then <clears throat> Monday after pick up the box, get back on trail as soon as we can. We have 66 miles to our slack, our slack pack uh, position. We'll just we'll hike in 66 miles, hike in 15 miles from the border, from the monument, <clears throat> camp for the night, wake up that morning, early Thursday morning with a light pack, hike down to the monument, um, take our photos, pop my bottle of champagne, which I do have one, light a cigar, and then hike back 15 miles to our slack pack point where we'll crash for Thursday night. <clears throat> and then all things go well, walk out uh, next Friday morning to 27th, and she'll be back at Hearts Pass at by noon where uh, Trail Angel Cammy is going to be waiting for us with hopefully some uh, good beverages and some chips and salsa chips, whatever. And, you know, I should just put a bunch of stuff on this thing here, but uh, there's something good to snack on to Seattle. <clears throat> should be in Seattle my uh, next Friday afternoon, the 27th. Uh, I'm going to get a nice hotel room. I'm going to get a nice meal that night and then probably uh, fly home on Saturday, <clears throat> sometime on Saturday. So should be home at my place mid-afternoon, late afternoon on a Saturday afternoon. So it's kind of neat to get to the point where we can actually look at the numbers and we can actually say, hey, we can actually do this. We can fit this in our calendar. This works out good. And yeah, there's some people out here just kind of wander and don't plan at all. I'm, I like doing a combination of both. I do like to wander, but when it comes to setting up uh, someone picking you up, <clears throat> yeah, I don't want... I don't want Cammy to come all the way up here and sit there and wait for us for hours and hours and hours so or a day. That's the last thing I want because it's hard to pass in the middle of nowhere. And it's a tough drive up there. So I want to try to get as precise as we can <clears throat> so she can uh, pick us up without waiting in the middle of nowhere. But uh, again, the scenery is just amazing. Glacier Peak is right around the corner. We walk just to the west of it. So I'll have some good pictures of the, video, uh, the glaciers up there. And they've got some, uh, the milky streams and everything, just like in the glaciers and Mount Adams and yeah, unfortunately Mount Jefferson, but we didn't see it this year. <clears throat> but, um, so, it's a, it's a beautiful, it's going to be a beautiful walk today in the next couple of days to get to see he can, and actually the rest of the week it's going to be a beautiful walk all the way to the monument, so. All right, I'm going to put my phone back in my bag, get some more hiking done. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Ho, <laughs> 
This is one of the Milky Rivers coming off the uh, glaciers on Glacier Peak. Check this out. Holy crap. This is crazy. It's like a uh, river of milk. <laughs> Funny, I've seen pictures of this creek and this bridge before. Morning, guys. Uh, it's Friday, August 20th. Just left camp uh, about five, ten minutes ago. <clears throat> it's about 6.15 in the morning. And it gets a little chilly, a little cloudy. There's a chance for anywhere from 25 to 40% chance of a thunder shower this afternoon. So I'm going to try to book it, get... I think throwing out kind of we're, we're kind of negotiating 23, 25, probably 23 and a half. The next decent campsite where we can split the split the distance between because it's like 50 miles right now to um, Sahican, and uh, <clears throat> there's no way I can make it there by Saturday. But you got to make it there by Saturday to get the last shuttle, and the last shuttle's like at six. Shuttle bus like at six or six thirty, so it'd be possible, but it'd be pushing it and. Probably a little harder than I want to go right now. So, <clears throat> I'm going to do 23 today. Probably 23, 24 tomorrow. It'll be about four miles from the high bridge. On the Sunday morning, walk down to the high bridge and get the first shuttle. So, probably 23 today. <clears throat> but, goal is today is to get to camp before it starts getting a little nasty outside. So, you can see it's all foggy, but that's been foggy for the last couple days here in the mornings. So, hopefully... Get there hopefully nothing will happen at all i mean the last thing we need is the thunder showers up here and start sparking more fires definitely don't need that <coughs> but uh good day yesterday did 23 felt pretty good got to camp about five seemed pretty early which was nice um <coughs> ran into aka again i haven't seen him since before in between lone pine and kersage pass i'm glad to see he's still out uh, he's an older gentleman, um, I think he's somewhere in Northern California. It's good to see him still cooking. Uh, he was never moving very fast, but I'm glad he's still out here and about. Kind of wondering about him. He got stuck up in a snowstorm above Lone Pine <clears throat> when I was down in Lone Pine. And yeah, he said it was like, uh, everything froze in his tent. His water bottle froze, everything froze. So I'm glad that he's still out kicking. <clears throat> and, um... Oh, well, Winger Wing finally caught up to us. We, we thought he was in front of us. He finally caught up to us. So, he's doing well. He did a few more miles. Same thing. He wants to get to camp this afternoon before uh, the skies open up. So, that'll be a goal today. Other than that, though, it's about 130 miles to the finish. So, <clears throat> look, this time next week, we should be walking down to Hearts Pass and waiting for a ride home. 
fingers crossed. Still got a ways to go. Still got 130 miles to go. I know 130 miles. I'm thinking, where the hell is that? 130 miles on the other side. <clears throat> 151 was Paradise Cafe. Is that like Mike's Place? Yeah, like it's just before Mike's Place, I think, or something. So, I mean, it, again, that seems like 100 million years ago. Although it wasn't. It was just four months ago. But uh, 130 miles to go. Look excited. Actually, I'm <clears throat> now every night I, <clears throat> in my tent, I'm dreaming about, okay, what do I need to do to my house? What do I need to do to my cabin? Go to get a pickup, Kennedy. Hang out with my daughter. See, my son's in Cal son, Southern California, so be young son, so he, he already transferred on to UCLA. So I'm, I don't know if I get a chance to see him right away. Definitely get to see my oldest daughter and pick up Kenny, bring her back to my place and hang out. <clears throat> Looking forward to that. I was thinking, I guess she, I was thinking I'll, I'm already making a mental list of what I got to do when I get home. <clears throat> I have to shampoo my carpets in my cabin. They're due. Um, split wood. All the stuff I got to do. So I'm actually kind of brainstorming all the things I do. <clears throat> and like, okay, so what is the first meal that I want to eat after the trail? I am actually go to steak, but I don't know. Maybe salmon? I have no idea. <clears throat> I don't know, but I'm, I'm actually ready to get on a good diet again because I really haven't been eating too good out here. So looking forward to eating some normal food, some good food, some well-balanced, nutritious food. And uh, drop the candy for a little bit. Because you eat too much out here. Too much sugary stuff. You kind of have to. So you need the energy. Energy, energy. But that's the things I dream, dream about now. Getting ready for uh, finishing this thing and getting out. So, alright guys. <clears throat> I gotta get down this hill. Get some hiking done. Talk to you later. Went through some big marmots up here. A little closer to this guy. Big old healthy guy. What's up, buddy? You got an itch?
guys. August, Saturday, 21st. Hey, uh, in a doing, uh, <clears throat> 24 yesterday. Uh, finished up at the Miners Creek. I don't remember the exact mileage marker, but it was 108, 108 miles from the terminus. That's it. <clears throat> 108. Oh, shit, this is going to be a pain in the butt. So I get around with this without falling down the hill. Oh, shit. All right, there we go. <clears throat> uh, head up the hill now to the Look, we camped, we, myself, Thor, and uh, Wigan, we all camped together. <clears throat> Had a nice little conversation there last night. We kind of agreed that we were all <laughs> spent. Our bodies are kind of like working on, like, uh, overtime right now. And, uh, you know, backup power. But uh, heading up the hill now to uh, Cloudy Pass. Yeah, I wonder where they got that name from. It's nice and cloudy this morning, but uh, dodged the uh, thunderstorms yesterday. At least it didn't happen where we were at. Couldn't hear if they were happening anywhere else. Uh, we were right next to <clears throat> Miners Creek, which is pretty loud, so they could have been going all around us. We didn't know, but couldn't hear a thing last night. Actually, a nice night, nice campsite, too. Set right up on the, the creek, uh, <clears throat> get fresh water. Nice little spot. So, from that campsite, High Bridge, which is the uh, shuttle location for Stahican, was only 27 and a half miles. <coughs> we discussed uh, cranking out, but we all agreed. Doesn't matter. We all have to wait till Monday anyway. Uh, myself and Thor have boxes at the, the post office. And, well, excuse me. And uh, wing it. He needs to mail some stuff out, so... We're all kind of stuck there till Monday anyway. Until a plan today, at least for me, is <clears throat> do 24, 25, camp a couple miles from the high bridge, and then walk in tomorrow morning to grab the early show at 9 o'clock. So that's the plan for me. Um, <clears throat> feels pretty good getting closer every day. Oh, yesterday. I should, you actually, you've probably, probably just seen the video of it. There's a walk through an amazing forest. Some of the biggest trees I ever walked next to in my life. They were huge. Like an old growth forest, a little pocket of it right there. It's nice to see it. Didn't look like it uh, looked like a pretty protected location from fires and stuff. So beautiful big trees. A couple more were down, but I imagine those things are, should they gotta be at least 500 years old. Those things are huge. <coughs> but uh, that was neat. Most of the trail yesterday was pretty good. It always starts out, seem to start out with a morning climb like this one, I think is uh, probably about seven miles up. 20, probably 23, 25, 2400 feet up. So that's all good. <clears throat> but so yeah, when I pop over the top of this and go down another mile, I'll be under 100 miles ago. I'll be in the double digits to the terminus, which would be pretty cool. So. <clears throat> But other than that, though, everything's going good. Um, I had to sew another hole in my shoe. My shoes keep tearing up a lot of it. Some, some of these trails, like not right now, this is a nice trail, but some of these trails are full of vegetation, so I'm kind of ripping my shoes apart and the rocks. But other than that, though, things are going good. Body's holding up. But I can definitely tell. Then I'm on <clears throat> the last stretch of this hike. Body-wise, mentally, I'm actually really good. Mentally, I was the strongest I've ever been since I started. But uh, physically, yeah, I can tell. Every day when I get to the campsite, I put my tent up. I get a little lightheaded. And actually, I've been eating as much food as I can put down my throat every day, which is good. That seems to help. <clears throat> but, I mean, I'm convinced the only way to actually get past this is to finish and to take a week off and rest my body. So, <clears throat> you can imagine, I can't imagine you yeah, running a marathon every single day, or even walking a marathon every single day. It's nuts. For four and a half months. It's crazy. But, getting close to the finish with every step. So, alright guys, hope everybody's doing well at home. Um, there's a shit ton of people I need to thank when this is over, and I will. 
<coughs> there's so many people that helped me directly and even probably more of that number that helped me indirectly i'm gonna thank every one of you guys when this thing's over but first off gotta finish all right guys talk to you later uh man i thought i was supposed to do obstacle courses in the in the army must have been a big old probably an avalanche or who knows what the hell did this but this is gonna be fun That's just funny, there was a whole family of them, there was four up there, I think there's only two up there now. There was four marmots sitting up on this rock right next to the trail. Hey guys, just past 100 miles to go, 100 mile mark to go. I'm pretty sure uh, Wingant wrote that this morning as he's ahead of me here still. But uh, now I'm down to double digits. That's pretty damn cool. That is pretty cool. So, <clears throat> still plenty today to sh <clears throat> stop short a little bit from high but we'll see where we're going. It's 9.30 right now, I think, to that camp spot. It's, let's see, it was 23, so we're down, probably getting close to 10, so it's down to 13. Um, you know, it's only 17 high bridge. Um, either way, whether I stop short of high bridge, or if I can, I'm pretty sure I can make it before six. I'm gonna see how the body feels at about 24. When, well, kind of originally planned to camp. I feel feel good, or 23. If I feel good to do another four and it can make it to the high bridge before six with the last shuttle, I'm actually just push forward. <clears throat> we will see. We will see. But it's primar primarily all downhill the rest of the way this Tahikin, which is really nice. So, <clears throat> I really like to get like a room at the uh, Tahikin Valley, Valley Resort. I don't know if I'll get one tonight if I get there late, but uh, there's probably maybe a good chance I'll get one on Sunday. So, it would be nice to have a full zero and <clears throat> do nothing on Sunday. You gotta, gotta wait till Monday the post office opens up because it closes at 2 on today. There's no way I'd get there before 2. <clears throat> but, um, it's actually starting to clear up a little bit, which is nice. There's some big mountains around here. <clears throat> but, um, <clears throat> hey, shout out to uh, Katie and the girls, uh, Shelby and Alexandra. Katie, you probably saw the picture that I had of the uh, toilet sign. It relates back to the girls asking about, you know, where do you go to the bathroom out here? It's, it's neat, though, because Washington has these box toilets everywhere out here, and they're really nice i mean totally consolidate all the do and uh, i'm not sure why they don't have them in oregon and california i'm going to reach out when this thing's over i'm going to reach out to pcta and ask them about that why because <clears throat> they look extremely inexpensive to construct but you just have to install them i don't know if they clean them out they chemically clean them out i don't know how they do that there might be a safe environmental way to <clears throat> chemically reduce them, reduce the amount of dew. The last one I used, it was, it was actually pretty full. The one I used before, I put that last one though, but the, the view was incredible. <laughs> you're sitting there, you're on a ridge line, you're like, holy moly, this is beautiful out here. So let the girls know <clears throat> there are toilets out here that you can use, which is pretty cool, with the view, which is even better. So I'm sure on the Audubon, when you guys are going around, you probably don't have a toilet with a view. So, just want to pass that out to you and the girls. Hope you guys are doing well in Germany. Hopefully the uh, COVID is not crazy over there still. Probably is. There goes a little view of the valley down there and the mountains above. It's a beautiful area here. But, um, <clears throat> hope you guys are doing well. All right, guys. Talk to you later.
Ooh. Well. Yeah. <laughs>